Good morning. I'm Talia Coriat. I'm Lizzie Trago. I'm Michael Pereira. And I'm AJ Mills. And our topic is technology and education. Education has completely changed to meet the new standards of today's students. Its major influence is technology. It has been quote cool, updated to meet the changing. It has been quote cool, updated to meet the changing society. As you can see here, historically, in the 20th century, um, education is very time-based, textbook-driven with a lot of isolation and it's very factual with memorization. As to the new style of learning, it's very outcome-based, research-driven with active learning and higher level thinking. A recent study in 2015 provided by Heart Technologies polled that 89% of high schoolers have access to mobile devices. That close to all students have mobile devices. So what are they doing with this time? 43% of the time are doing educational games, 33 academic reminders and alerts, 18% in-class polling. New innovative tools and features have been linked to this new form of education technology. On to Michael. Thank you, AJ. So back in 2015, the United States spent, uh, spent $5.5 billion on IT equipment and also $255, $255 million on gadgets such as tablets and uh, readers. With all, this money, with all this money being spent, it leads to the question whether or not is this money actually being, is actually uh, helping students succeed in, their, uh, in, their, in the classroom. So this shows the 2016 spendings uh, by each state. California on top, Texas second, New York third. This also, this shows uh, the overall grade of every state. California was the major spender but yet it got a C on the overall grade. So from this you can from this you can tell. From this you can tell that spending spending all this money on technology does not always lead to student success. What we need to figure out is um is using this technology uh, effectively to help students. Now on the list. Thank you, Michael. So in America, our education systems are simply mediocre. This is because most of our students graduate either at or below the global state average for student success rate. So this can be attributed to cultural differences across the globe. So if you are to take a country like Singapore, for example, they have a really high academic success rate, and this is due to their high expectations of the culture and the rigorous pace of their education systems. According to David Hogan, who is a professor and a research scientist at the University of Queensland, he states that a lot of Singapore's academic success stems from its national plan in investing in technology education. So, um, uh, two ways that technology education is typically used is one, collaboration, which is how Singapore uses it, and two, isolation, which is how the United States uses it. So if you look at this source from the National Center for Education Statistics, Singapore leads the United States in all of these areas and is specifically number one in fourth grade math and number one in eighth grade science. This is because it uses the collaborative technique rather than isolation. So as I'm sure we're all very aware, the United States uses isolation, which basically means we do individual tests, quizzes, and assignments, and essays, where we don't really discuss with our peers a lot. So, um, and then the United States using the isolation, we don't get as much academic success. However, Singapore uses collaboration, so it's more academically successful across the globe, which makes it number one. So according to Sarah Butry Malkowitz, she Studied, uh, she studied a school called the Crescent Girls School in Singapore. And that school was funded by the National Institute of Education. And with that funding, they bought technology and other equipment to be used in their education systems. And then they created social media platforms so they could discuss results and concepts and reflect as a group, which led to a deeper understanding of topics and material. So once you apply the use of this technology in a collaborative way, which the Crescent Girls School used, you get a country like Singapore, which has the best higher education, with the United States trailing behind because it uses the isolation method. On to Talia. Thank you, Lizzie. So as AJ said, since the 20th century, teenage thinking patterns have changed a lot. For example, now we have an easier time multitasking and we learn better using social media and multimedia, whereas baby boomers from the last generation, they have better attention span skills and and everything according to Nielsen neurofocus research and so ever since then like 
technology and education is very important because the way that we've learned, we were raised was with technology, so that helps us learn better. And today, in our society, more and more companies and industries are looking for employees with STEM skills, so technology and education is very important. As Lizzie stated, even though the, like, the United States, as Michael stated, like, they, they spend a lot of money on education, back to Lizzie's point, they do not have, they're not in the top five countries in terms of testing scores. So uh, back to Michael's point that using a lot of money on technology is not always beneficial. What schools will need in the future is a good internet connection and a good infrastructure with things such as a cloud network to ensure that devices such as PCs, remote monitoring, monitorings, and databases are being utilized properly. So the, the real question is, how are we using our technology to help us? Because we use a lot of technology. For example, we have our laptops in school, but we do not use the laptops in every class period. And sometimes it's better to write stuff down. So technology, ultimately, it's essential for helping us learn communicational skills, and it helps us work effectively. But it also needs to be used in the right way. Thank you. What questions do you have? All right, guys, uh, we're going to start with Lizzie first. Which part of this presentation did you find to be the most challenging to defend or argue, uh, and why so? Well, according to Michael's perspective, we found that technology and education wasn't really useful because California spent the most money, yet it didn't have the highest scores across the United States. But my point said that technology, when used in the correct way, implies that it's you have higher academic success rate. So it's kind of hard to defend that point when there's a bunch of other counter arguments across the group. Thank you. AJ. How did your views change based on the evidence of other team members? Um, well, my personal opinion, I um, thought that technology wasn't that great of an impact. But as Lizzie stated, when you use technology in the correct way, the benefits can be like outstanding how Singapore was number one across the board for a lot of things. All right, Michael. Thank you, AJ, sorry. Michael, um, what ways did you improve your ability to work with the group as a result of this project? Uh, I improved my ability by communicating more with um, with my colleagues like Kalia and uh, Lizzie, you know, telling them what, tell, asking them uh, for their opinions and what should I write down and uh, what should I leave out and all that. Thank you. And Kalia, um, what will you take from this for the next time you present? I think that we should meet up a lot more as a group. And even though we, <laughs> sorry, even though we had a group chat, like, we didn't always communicate with each other. Like sometimes it was a few of us talking and other people weren't there. But also, like, we met a few times. I think we should have met further in advance instead of closer to when our actual presentation was. All right, cool. Thank you.